Hey, so we all got that email from your friends at Plex, right? Now you must upgrade to a Plex Pass to enable remote access to your content. There's an alternative, a Jellyfin. I'm going to walk you through how to configure via Docker Compose. And we're going to place it behind a reverse proxy, which for this video is going to be Nginx Proxy Manager. This is by far the easiest way to get Jellyfish up and running. If you were using Plex before, you should be able to use the same media folder that you have already set up for Plex. All right, so let's begin. All right, so let's start off with the Docker Compose file. So we're using this, the latest official Jellyfin image, and we are specifying the container name as well. So this is the host name that we will be configuring NPM later on in the video. So we're also placing it on the NPM network. And this is the same network as my reverse proxy. So we're going to comment out the port configuration. So for volumes, the first two volumes are the configuration for Jellyfin and the cache folder for caching metadata, thumbnails, and other temporary files. The next configurations, uh, we want to use bind mounts because it allows Jellyfin to directly access the media stored on your system. This also gives Jellyfin uh, full control over host system files rather than relying on Docker managed volumes. So for my setup, I have a hard drive mounted in the slash media folder. So I'm allowing Jellyfin to access the media there. And the target is where the files will be mounted from within the container. Lastly, I have this environment variable set to the URL that I will be configuring within NPM, in which case it'll be jellyfin.npm.geniehome.net. Okay, so let's go ahead and start the container by running the command sudo docker compose up dash d. Now let's pivot over to Nginx Proxy Manager. And you can watch my video on NPM to get this configured with SSL certificates if you haven't done this already. So from the dashboard, we're going to click on proxy host. Then click add proxy host. For the domain name, we're going to put the URL that we specified in the compose.yaml file. We're going to keep the scheme at HTTP. And for the forward host name slash IP, we're going to put the container name here, in which for my case will be Jellyfin. And then for the port, if we look at the compose file, we can see that the port that Jellyfin listens on is 8096. So we're going to put that there. All other options on this tab is optional. Now we're going to switch over to SSL. And we're going to select the wildcard certificate for your subdomain that you're using. Again, all of the options in this tab is optional as well. So for me, I'm going to select my npm.geniehome.net wildcard certificate. And then I'm going to click Save. So if you look under the source column, you can just select the Jellyfin configuration that we configured earlier right here. All right, right now uh, we can go through the initial configuration. So you want to select your preferred language and click Next. Now we're going to enter a username and password for the admin account. You can also add more users later on within the dashboard as well. Next, you'll want to add a media library. And you can choose the content type. And you can choose the display name as well. Then for folders, you'll see the folders that we configured with within the compose.yaml file. I'll just choose movies and OK. 
And then you can go over all the other settings if you want, depending on your content type, the settings will change. So for the sake of time, I'm just going to choose OK. And then you'll just follow the same steps to add more content. And once you're done with that, you'll choose Next. Next, you'll want to select your metadata language, and then you'll click Next. This check does not matter since Jellypin is behind a proxy. Just go ahead and click Next. Now sign in, and you should be able to see your media. And as you can see, you can see all the media. This is easy to configure and very easy to implement as well. And there you have it, an easy tutorial on how to configure Jellyfin. If you found this video helpful, please sure, make sure to hit the like subscribe button for more tech tips and tutorials. If you have questions or want to share your own experience, drop a comment below. Thanks for watching. Until next time.